Neil Adler. I guess let's start there, Neil. And, uh, you know, Joe Tipton, we had him on our show yesterday. And then right as he left the show, he kind of broke some news that uh, Chance Westry has been uh, fully cleared to take part in all basketball-related activities. Uh, your, your thoughts on uh, getting Chance back in the fold? Well, first of all, guys, hope you've had a good summer. Appreciate you having me on. Um, uh, and, I, and I agree with you. Maybe that was kind of the expectation all along that he'd be. He's good to go and fully cleared. And, and obviously, Joe, who's great at his job, you know, had that online yesterday. Um, regardless of whether it was official before, it's official now. I think it's great news for, for Chance, who, you know, prior to coming into the college game, was a four-star top 40 national prospect. Longtime Syracuse recruit, obviously started out at Auburn and then and transferred to Syracuse. And, you know, it was really unfortunate he didn't play much with the Tigers due to an injury and then didn't play at all this past year. And so, you know, wishing him all the best this season, but a, a fully healthy chance Westry gives this team just a lot of depth and versatility in the backcourt. Uh, I think given his frame and, and, and length, he could play out on the wing as a small forward as well. And it just... Yeah, I'm not sure he's necessarily going to be in the starting rotation, especially given he didn't play last year, but he's going to be a key piece for Adrian Autry. He's 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 really talented. He gets after it defensively. He's hyper-athletic. I don't know if he's necessarily the best outside shooter that, on the team, but um, he's a dynamic playmaker on both ends of the floor, and, and with him fully healthy and him playing significant minutes, I think that really raises the oranges ceiling this year. Yeah, at this point last year, he was a full go. And, uh, you know, I was hearing great things. I know you were too, uh, Paulie, just how, how well he was practicing. Mm-hmm. It's unfortunate that he got hurt again. I yep. uh, had to sit out all of last year. But uh, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing Chance Westry in action. All right, uh, Neil, we had John mainly to talk football. So let's talk some SU football. And, you know, this is the time of year we all give our expectations and our predictions. And, you know, I, I've said on the show, I, I think this team's winning eight games. You know, Paulie's not ready to go quite that far yet he's got him at seven uh what are your expectations heading into uh, year one under fran brown well i i first of all i think it's uh, you know the buzz on the hill is obviously palpable given fran coming in and and you know retaining some coaches but bringing in some other coaches and everything with the transfer portal and the, the high school recruiting class there's there's excitement like there hasn't been in years um, I think the schedule on paper is favorable. Um, I break it up into what are what is what are the expectations and what are the goals. I think Fran Brown, given his, he is a highly confident um, man, um, and I think he's going to do well. Even though he's obviously a first year head coach, first time head coach, he certainly wants to contend for an ACC title and a and a berth in the expanded CFP. Uh, in terms of expectations. I think I'm with you, Steve. I, I'm looking at kind of the seven to nine win range. I think that, again, given the schedule on paper, and, you know, this is all speculative because we don't know how the, the Orange is going to fare on the field come August 31st against Ohio, and we don't know how their opponents are going to fare, um, you know, throughout the season. But I think the schedule is favorable. And I think the floor, perhaps, maybe we look at it seven and five and, and the ceiling nine plus wins. Um, I, I would be shocked if they did not make a bowl game for the third straight season. I think they have some really nice pieces across the board on in, in all three areas. Uh, a healthy Trevor Pena gives them a dynamic playmaker on special teams. Uh, everyone t- obviously talks about Kyle McCord, and if knock on wood, he stays healthy with all his weapons at wide receiver, tight end. Into the running back room, they got a lot, a lot of weapons there, and then you know we'll see how the offensive line holds up. I think it has more depth than in, in other recent years. And then if we look at the defense, I think the secondary is absolutely looking fabulous. You know, Fidel Diggs on the edge is a, a terrific transfer in. Um, Marlo Wax at linebacker, and we'll see how the defensive line you know does. That was obviously a shame about Ingram earlier this week. Uh, wish him the best. Um, but 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 I would I would say seven wins at a minimum. Um, they've got. You know, some games on the schedule that look like they could be challenging uh, and at NC State. Obviously, Miami is getting a lot of buzz. I think from a non-conference standpoint, um, I think they'll breeze through three of the games. I think the game at UNLV will be, won't be a cakewalk. First of all, it's at UNLV. UNLV was pretty good last year. They got a bunch of votes, uh, you know, in the other receiving votes category um, with the first coaches poll that was recently released. And it's, you know, they're going out to the West Coast. So that's not a gimme. But I'd expect them to win eight, at least eight games, if not more. All right, so you got him in that you said seven to nine range, yeah. Um, and you said that you would expect him to make a bowl game. I think we're we're all in agreement on that. Let me ask you this: sure. if they if they don't make it to a bowl, I think we can all agree that would be a disappointment. That would be a disappointing season. Yes. 
What if they go six and six? Is six and six, <clears throat> would you deem that a disappointing season? Would it be acceptable in year one under Fran Brown? What would you do is with, with a six and six season? I think part of it is you'd have to look at the context of what went into that six and six season. Who did they beat? Who did they lose to? The games they lost were the games they should have won, quote unquote. Were they close games? Were, did they, like they have in years past, did they suffer a significant amount of injuries, whether at quarterback, again, knock on wood, or, or just in other key areas? I think if they're assumably a fully, relatively fully healthy team and injuries are part of sports, I do think a six and six season would be somewhat of a disappointment. Again, given all the the buzz, you know, with with this team and with Kyle McCord and the other transfers and just the returnees, Gatson, hopefully fully healthy and you know Barron and 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 whatnot. Um, I, I would characterize it, I guess, as a little bit of a disappointment. I wouldn't say that John Wildhack needs to give Fran Brown the axe at that point. I mean, it'd be his first season. And and let's keep in mind, even if they go six, six and six, they likely you know, they would make another bowl game. And if they win that, okay, seven and six, three straight bowl games. But yeah, I, I'd like to see them at least win seven games and and then more. Um, but I, I wouldn't want to characterize anything, you know at a 500 uh, level is a disappointment without looking at, you know, kind of what, ha- what actually happened throughout the season. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, you, you know, Paulie posed this question yesterday. I'll, I'll pose it to you. Um, which team do you see improving more upon last year's performance, men's basketball or football and, and, you know, which team and why? Man, that's a fun one. Um, I th- I think both teams are going to improve. So so the football team went six and seven last year, obviously with that that tough loss in the bowl game, and and the men's basketball team to me, and I've written about this on Loud House, and I've said it till I'm blue or orange in the face. I think a twenty and twelve record, given all the context, Adrian Autry's first year replacing Jim Beheim, a lot of sophomores, a tough non conference, some 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 unfortunate injuries. I still think it was a successful year, even though they missed the tournament for, for the third straight season. Obviously, the, the the bad loss in the ACC tournament to eventual Final Four participant NC State was a bummer. And, and for me with the basketball team, I, I think that the main thing I'd like to see, assuming they win at least 20 plus games and hopefully get into the tournament this year is... When they do lose games, because they're not going to go undefeated, it's uh, they, they lost a lot of games last year by really large margins, and I'd, so I'd like to to see them close the gap when 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 and if they do have losses. But to answer your question, Steve, I think I'm going to go with the football team, but it's a tough one for me. Uh, you know, again, Syracuse basketball won 20 and 11 last year in the regular season. Um, they, they, they exceeded expectations in terms of their standing, uh, their finish in the ACC. And I think they have a quote unquote softer non-conference schedule this year and a manageable ACC schedule. And they've got a lot of new faces like every other team. And I, I think they're going to win 21 or 22 games in the regular season and, and go to the NCAA tournament. Um, but I think Syracuse football is going to win eight plus games. And if they win eight, nine games, I, I guess I would have to say that they're going to have quote unquote the bigger improvement but i think they're both going to be better yeah i I agree with you i think they're both going to be better and and i i do think uh football is going to take a a significant step uh this year as you said given the schedule given the talent on the roster given fran brown everything that goes into that uh last football question for me um what's your biggest question mark with with this team is it offensive line is it is it defensive line is it you know the, this coaching staff and you know we haven't seen him coach a game yet i mean what is your biggest question mark uh heading into august 31st in the opener against ohio sure um you know it's it's been widely reported talked about ad nauseum that fran Brown is a first year and a first time head coach and he's got a lot of new assistants, and I think all of them are really excellent coaches. But yeah, it remains to be seen how they're going to fare on the field come August 31st against Ohio. So I wouldn't necessarily label Fran and the coaching staff as a question mark. I would label that as a to be determined. Uh, you know, let's see how they do. In terms of question marks, yeah, I would say look at both, you know, both the lines. Uh, offensive line certainly has had some ups and downs in recent years. And, and part of that has, has to do with, um, you know, issues with, you know, depth and injuries. And I think the offensive line is, does have more depth this year and is going to be solid on the defensive line. As I mentioned, obviously with Ingram out, that hurts, but you know, again, Fidel digs on the, on the edge is great. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd have to go with either of the lines. And then I, again, I don't know if I'd label it a question mark, 
But, you know, how is, how is Syracuse going to fare in the special teams, you know, both in the kicking game and the punting game? And, it, you know, if Pena is fully healthy, I think he's going to be a great return man. And then the other thing I'd say is not necessarily, again, a question mark, but just something to monitor is how disciplined is this team going to be? I, th- I think Fran Brown is instilling a lot of discipline in them, but are they going to have issues with penalties like they've had in the past? Um, that, that's something to monitor as well. But, but, but just generally speaking, I'd say both of the lines are, are areas to watch. All right, Neil, uh, how can people uh, consume your content? Remind people as, as we head into the new season, how they can find you and, and your work. No, oh, thanks, Steve. Um, so, um, so it's inside the loudhouse.com and uh, we're loudhouse FS on X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it. And um, yeah, no, I appreciate that. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming on. And uh, in another couple of weeks, we're, we're going to have some ac- actual games to talk about. I know we're all looking forward Can't to wait. that. Uh, Neil, uh, enjoy what's left of your summer and we'll, we'll talk again soon. Thanks guys. Appreciate you. Take care.